know you're in that boot. Come on, out you get. How did you even fit in there? Like, honestly, why don't you just curl up in a corner somewhere and not in my boot? Hey, Hayden here from FalsonFantasy.com and today we're going to be looking at the motion tracking capabilities in Blender. This is the first part of a tutorial looking at the components that goes into creating a scene like this in Blender. So get some popcorn and get ready to learn some Blender. Firstly, in terms of material, we're going to need a pen, paper, scissors and some adhesives. We're going to turn the paper into markers by cutting them into squares, not circles, because circles could cause our tracking points to slip and then drawing on them such as this. This allows us to have multiple points on each marker to track. It may not be necessary to use markers if your scene includes areas of high contrast. Mine doesn't have many areas of high contrast, especially in the foreground, so I opted to go with the marker route. And I thought this would be a good opportunity to show the workflow of using markers in Blender. Before we use our adhesives to stick the markers to our area, we want to take a few photographs, a clean plate. Here are some examples of mine. We do this so it's easier to composite out the markers later in the shot. After that, you can stick the markers on the floor. Make sure to have a good balance of background and foreground markers, just so you have a good amount of data available. And then you're ready to shoot. Here's an example of my first take and the source clip that I'm going to be using to track on. I suggest filming in a high frame rate, such as 60 frames per second, as it will help your footage in terms of motion blur, which is quite difficult to track in Blender. Most modern phones are able to shoot in 60 frames per second if you do not have access to a camera that does so. Upon opening Blender, I'm going to change my frame rate to the frame rate that I'm going to be using for this footage, so in this case 25 frames per second. And then I'm going to go up to the drop down menu up here, and then I'm going to click our workspace default of motion tracking. I am then going to come down here and open the clip that I want to track. After opening your clip there are a few things that you want to do first. You want to set scene frames which will set the end frame to the end frame of your clip and then you want to prefetch. What this will do is it will preload the scene into the editor, into the editor cache I should say, so that it's you have seamless so that you have seamless buffering. If the blue bar doesn't fill all the way, go to File, User Preferences, then go to System, and then after that scroll down to where you find the Clip Editor Cache, and then you can up that number. Okay, now that that is all out of the way, let's get to tracking. Now the first thing I like to do is come over here to the tracking settings and under presets select fast motion. You should see that the motion model has now changed from location to location and rotation. Next let's press detect features and as you see Blender has automatically detected features that it thinks will be a good area to track. Next we're going to come down to the track drop down menu and press track forward. Then you should see that the bar at the top it starts filling up with the red and green lines. Now not all of these lines will be perfect, you can see outliers, especially towards the end. So what we want to do is we want to come in bef just before they begin to deviate from their path. So we're looking for outliers and then we want to come down here and press clear forward. So this will clear all of the data that is in front of the green bar that you're scrolling through. So we just want to do this with all the tracking data that deviates from the paths or the average paths, which should be fairly obvious to see. Doing this will really help the accuracy of our track. After we've cleaned up those initial points, we want to go to the end of our clip and we're going to do the exact reverse. So we're going to detect features again and then we're going to come down and instead of tracking forward, we're going to track backwards. So here we go. Now you can see as the tracking markers go off screen, they become red. So they're deactivated, they're no longer tracking their points. So we can see our tracking data and you can see that there's more deviation. So this time we're going to set it before the error occurs and then we're going to clear backwards. 
So you want to be really careful about this. You really want to be careful about tracking backwards. And you see this point where how the red bar goes up? That's not an error. That's just because it's coming in at that point. So it starts at zero. In saying that, I suggest that you clear one frame before the beginning. So I'm just going to go through and just clean up all those tracks now very quickly. You, you want to take your time with this. You want to make sure that you're getting rid of data that you don't need. It's, it's really good that we got a really good overlap with the forward and backwards markers because in Blender you need eight concurrent markers on screen at a time to for the track to be successful. So just keep that in mind when you're placing your markers. After you are happy with the amount of track points that you have, you can select them all by pressing A or deselect them all by pressing A and then press Ctrl L to lock them. As you can see they'll all turn grey and that means you can't change the data in them anymore. Okay I'm going to do one last track and this time from the center. So I'm going to go back up, detect features and this time we're going to remember the frame and we're going to track backwards and then forwards. Okay, now that's done, we're going to do the same as before and we're going to clean up the data. After that, we're going to go to the solve panel and we're going to change the keyframe A and B. We want to look for the area where there's the most movement in our shot. So in this case, where the red and blue tails are the longest. So in my case, it's between 300 and 330. Then we're going to change our camera settings. So we want our to match the sensor of the camera. So in this case, I was using an S8, which has a 25.4 width. And then we want to go down to lens and change it to the lens that we were using. So I looked up the spe specifications for the camera and allegedly it is 23 millimeters or thereabouts. You don't have to worry too much about the lens I've found as it's a bit fiddly. So then we're just going to solve camera motion. And as you can see, I've got a really good score. Anything below one is considered a really good track. Anything between one and three is considered an okay track. And anything above three is a bad track and you want to go back and clean up your data some more. So now that we've got a really good track, we're going to set up the scene so it's ready to render on. So let's go down to scene settings and we're going to set as background. So this is going to set the movie as a background in the compositor. And then we're going to set up tracking scene. You should see up in the top right hand window that our scene has changed. So let's now expand this window by dragging the corner of it into the one on the left and then after that the one below it. That's excellent. Now we've got a much better view. So you can see that the button set up our scene. So there's the tracking points and the camera. But right now it's not ready to use. We want the tracking points to be aligned with the floor plane. To do that, just select three points on the floor and then press floor. Now the points that you want to pick should be far away from each other and really encompass the entirety of the scene. After that you can pick another point and select its origin. That point now in 3D space will be the center of your scene. So there we go, let me just scale these down and show you our track. That's pretty awesome isn't it? Now we've come to the end of the first part of this tutorial, which focused on tracking. I hope that you've learnt something and I hope that I was clear and concise. If you have any questions or queries regarding the process, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to get back to you as quickly as possible. If you found this tutorial helpful, please give it a like. And for more content like this, please consider subscribing. Thank you so much. This is Hayden Falzon from FalzonFantasy.com, signing off.